Hi, I'm John Fleenor, Product Manager for Vantage Transcoding. I'd like to talk about our high dynamic range support within the product and show some of the new capabilities that we will be releasing this year. As a refresher, high dynamic range is a significant visual improvement over the standard dynamic range we have grown used to. It accomplishes this by increasing the scope of the color gamut, increasing the granularity of each step of increased brightness, and greatly expanding the maximum brightness level possible. HDR typically comes in one of two flavors, static and dynamic. Static HDR is constant throughout a piece of media and the same for all frames of video. Dynamic HDR metadata can change from frame to frame or scene to scene. Examples of high dynamic range are Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus developed by Samsung. Because there are multiple standards for both HDR and SDR, common operations when handling video content will fall into three primary categories, upconversion, downconversion, and crossconversion. Downconversion is taking high dynamic range content and squeezing it into a standard dynamic range standard. Some amount of color and brightness data will be lost in an operation like this, as the SDR standards are simply not capable of storing the full color gamut or brightness range used in HDR. Many consumer televisions and displays on the market today are still SDR only, so content created in HDR will often need a down conversion such as this for compatibility reasons. Up conversion refers to taking standard dynamic range content and remapping the colors into a high dynamic range standard. In most cases, this will not increase the visual fidelity of the content by itself, but does put the content into a form where it can have the colors or brightness expanded through color grading or other manipulation. Cross-conversion is simply mapping the color metadata between one standard or another within the same category, either SDR to SDR or HDR to HDR. In the SDR scenario, this is commonly 601-709 conversions and vice versa, and in HDR, this would include HDR10, PQ, and HLG content. While my focus is the transcoding actions within Vantage, high dynamic range support spans multiple actions within a workflow. For example, the analysis action can measure or extract existing HDR metadata from a source file. All or some of the parameters visible here can be extracted based on the workflow needs and the supported metadata in the final output. These values can then be mapped to variables where they can be reinserted in another action that will execute later. Within the transcoding actions in Vantage, you will find two filters used for controlling the processing of color. The first is the color space filter shown here. Four separate parameters fully describe how the color is stored in a file, and these can be configured separately for the input and output of the transcoding action. You will note that the input options include both an automatic and same as source selection. While similar in concept, there is an important and notable distinction. Not all source files have fully signaled or properly signaled color metadata. Because this metadata provides context to the stored color values of each pixel, getting these wrong when converting between different colored standards can result in undesired shifts in color tones. Automatic mode will attempt to reconcile the signaled metadata with the content frame size and other details to derive the complete set of metadata. Same as source will carry through whatever is signaled within the source file, even if it appears incorrect or incomplete. Finally, each individual parameter can be definitively set to a specific value to override any source file signaling. A similar concept exists for the output configuration as well where you will most commonly be explicitly setting the output parameters, but can use automatic mode to choose the color space signaling based on a variety of other video parameters. In addition to the color space filter, we have also added a matching color lookup table filter to the color processing pipeline. This will enable the same workflow and conversions as previously described, but will use a 3D lookup table to perform the conversion instead. When using a lookup table, it is typical that the input and output parameters are explicitly set in the user interface to match the input and output color spaces used when authoring the LUT file. Finally, depending on the output codec, it may also be required to signal some additional HDR metadata, 
such as the maximum content light level or mastering display luminance and measurement coordinates that you saw earlier in the analysis action. All of these parameters can be assigned to variables for both extraction and insertion depending on what action you are working with. Dynamic flavors of HDR have frame-aligned metadata that content creators want to ensure goes unmodified. Once authored using dynamic HDR metadata, the goal of these workflows is usually packaging and delivery while ensuring that the dynamic HDR metadata is undisturbed and unchanged. Vantage is capable of creating IMF and DCP packages or MXF and HEVC deliverables with Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus metadata from a variety of sources. HDR10 Plus is scheduled for later this year, however Dolby Vision will be released shortly and I can demonstrate some of the capabilities for you today. A Dolby Vision workflow can either insert or extract Dolby Vision metadata within Vantage. As you may recall, Dolby Vision is a dynamic HDR technology where the color and brightness metadata can change from scene to scene or frame to frame. This color metadata can be thought of abstractly as a track, much like video, audio, or an ancillary data track. In fact, in some cases this metadata is actually interleaved into the ancillary data track to create a self-contained Dolby Vision deliverable file. In other cases, the Dolby Vision metadata is carried in a sidecar XML file that accompanies the video content it describes. You can see the extraction controls here in the analysis action. The user interface is very simple here. Just specify the input nickname for the file to extract the interleaved metadata from, and the output is either a Vantage nickname, attachment, or as an XML file. All three of these options can be referenced by other actions depending upon your needs. Here we have a pre-configured Dolby Vision insertion setup in the FLIP64 action. The FLIP64 action uses a concept of streams to represent audio, video, and data tracks as they flow through the action configuration. You can see here a new input type called Dolby Vision metadata. This will ingest a Dolby Vision XML metadata stream from either a sidecar XML file or a Vantage workflow nickname or attachment. You can also see the traditional ANC stream from the input media file as well. Complementing this new input type is a new Dolby Vision insertion converter. The purpose of this step is to combine, or interleave, the Dolby Vision metadata stream with the source file and ciliary data stream. This creates a combined output stream seam here. This converter output stream is then mapped to the final output ANC stream here. For our initial rollout of this functionality, only a Profile 5 interleaved HEVC output will be supported for this specific workflow. However, as the Sidecar XML data may also be inserted into IMF or DCP packages or into the data track of an MXF container. In summary, Vantage 8 supports your HDR workflows. You can upconvert, downconvert, or cross-convert SDR and HDR content using our automatic tone mapping or a LUT file. Soon we'll be adding optional support for color front technologies to perform these same operations. All major HDR standards are supported and can be handled by Vantage and its 16-bit video processing pipeline. Please contact the Telestream sales team today to discuss our solutions to your workflow needs and to schedule a demo. Thank you and have a great day.